Hello and welcome to Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. On this channel, you will get knowledge and tips to cultivate useful business skills that will increase your employability. In the previous video, we saw a brief snapshot of the history of statistics. In this video, we will try to get ourselves acquainted with the basic concepts and some terminology of statistics to create a good foundation in statistics. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start by understanding the definition of statistics. It is the science of collection, organization, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. Please note the emphasis on numerical data. We will deal with each of these terms individually in the future videos since each term needs a separate treatment. Statistics helps us to draw conclusions by identifying patterns in the data. Studying these patterns enables us to draw insights that can be utilized for further improvement. We can even test our support beliefs or claims using statistics. Questions like whether car A is more fuel efficient than car B can be answered. Predicting outcomes of a task or process also is possible using statistics. So we know that statistics is all about numerical data. However, a caution needs to be exercised. All statistics constitutes of numerical statements of facts. However, not all numerical statement of facts is statistics. Let's look at these two examples to understand what we mean by that. To compute the average of 100 students in the 10th grade, we will need to measure the height of each of the 100 students and then take the average. Against this, in the other case, we are looking at measuring the height of one individual in the 10th grade. In both these examples, we are collecting numerical facts. However, in the first instance, we are collecting data for a group or many cases as against one single case. So when we are collecting numerical data, we need to be asking a question, a statistical question. To understand what falls into the definition and ambit of a statistical question, let's look at the following four questions. To answer the question on TV watching hours every week, we need to collect data for an individual on a daily basis for several weeks. Similarly, to answer whether it rained more in North India compared with West India, we need to collect rainfall data for every day across all the months during the monsoon season. When we examine these two questions, we will observe that one does not watch TV every day for the same amount of time. So also, it does not rain exactly the same amount of rain throughout the month. That means there appears to be some amount of variation in the data collected on a regular basis. If we compare these responses with the other two questions related to one's age, or one's height, there is some exactness of response in the later two questions. So we can safely surmise that a statistical question has variability or a spread in the response as against a non-statistical question that exhibits exactness. A word of caution, therefore, do not use statistics if you are not answering a statistical question. So it brings us to the next question as to where do I use all this information, where do I use all these definitions, concepts. We may not use it in daily life, but let's say for a moment, if we wanted to plan a monthly budget for the household expenses. We would need to collect data on household expenses every day for a long period of time. Or if we wanted to reduce energy consumption in our house, we would need to collect data on electricity usage every day for a few months. 
Similarly, in business, we often use statistics to address business objectives of profitability and growth by answering questions like which product should I launch or how much do I manufacture? At this point, let's take a moment to pause and recollect that if you are not asking a statistical question, do not use statistics. So let me know in the comments below some examples of what you consider as statistical questions that you would want to be answered. Now that we've understood what's statistics and what constitutes a statistical question, let's take a quick look at some of the terminology. We will look at each of these terms in the slides ahead. Data can be classified based on source from which it is obtained. When either we or our representative collects data for us for seeking resolution to a specific statistical question, data such generated is called primary data. Let's say we wanted to know the consumer preference for a product we have manufactured. We will need to conduct an ad hoc data collection exercise across consumers. When we use any data collected by someone else for someone else to answer statistical questions raised by us, we are looking at dealing with secondary data. Census data, stock price data from Bloomberg, macroeconomic data collected and shared by the government or a federal bank will constitute such data. There are two types of variables for the data that is collected quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative variable provides decision based on numbers. We can conduct arithmetic operations on such data since it can be measured. Answers to questions like how many cars do you own constitutes a quantitative variable because we can actually measure the answer to these responses. For the qualitative variable, as the term suggests, it records a quality, character, feeling, perspective or such other things. Such data is always observed. Here a number has an arbitrary meaning. Responses to questions like which type of car do you own does not result in a number, but in the brand of the car that is owned. When we are dealing with quantitative variable or quantitative data, we are dealing with two types of attributes of the data that is discrete and continuous. Discrete is usually an integer value whilst continuous is a decimal value. An example of your age is a discrete attribute. Age cannot be defined in decimal value. An example of continuous attribute would be something like temperature, which can be described in a decimal value. This brings us to the most important part of the discussion. What kind of scales do you use to measure such type of variables? The first scale in the set is a nominal scale where we use numbers as labels. Any scale that uses names of person, place or a thing as labels is a nominal scale. The responses of such a scale cannot be compared with each other numerically. Examples for a type of house like flat, row house, thatched roof, penthouse or for a gender, male or female, constitute nominal scales of measurement. Next in line is the ordinal scale which orders the data based on relative size or quality. It can be compared Responses can be compared except for the degree of preference which is not a part of the comparison. Measurement responses like small, medium, high or the size of a flat, one bedroom hall kitchen, two bedroom hall kitchen or three bedroom hall kitchen constitute ordinal data since you can order them in a particular way. However, there is no numerical representation for each of them and therefore they cannot be compared with each other. In an interval data, there is no true zero and hence a ratio cannot be taken. 
let's understand the concept of true zero. If we take temperature, there is no concept called as zero temperature. Also, we'll see that 20 degrees Celsius is not twice as hot as 10 degrees Celsius. Why? Because 20 degrees Celsius equals 68 degree Fahrenheit and 10 degree Celsius equals 50 degree Fahrenheit. And we can very well see that 68 degree Fahrenheit is not twice that of 50 degree Fahrenheit. For a ratio scale, all the shortcomings seen till now do not hold. Here we can measure, compare, carry out arithmetic operations on the responses. A ratio scale has a true zero. Some examples for of a ratio scale would be responses for distance, height or measurement of a liquid quantity. We can have a zero distance, we can have a zero height or we can have zero measurement of a liquid quantity. So also we can add distances, we can add heights or for that matter we can add liquid quantities. We can see that nominal and ordinal scales often relate to qualitative data and interval or ratio scales relate to quantitative data. A quick summary of the four scales reveals that each scale of measurement is progressively a better option over the previous one. This brings us to the set of last terms in our list. Population and sample. Population is nothing but a collection or a set of all the elements that we are interested in. It is often a very large number like the population of a country or the population of planet Earth. Sample is nothing but a subset or a smaller collection taken or drawn out from this population. And hence, it is a smaller number and it is most often than not taken as a representative of the population. In the next video, we will cover the first stage of statistics, which is collection of data. So that's it for now. So if you find the information in this video useful, do like this video and share it with others. If you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it. Do let me know in the comments below on what topics you would want to be covered in the future videos. Have a nice day, stay healthy and peaceful.